Labyrinthos, the name of the tower that serves as the UTIC organization's central headquarters. The term is also generally used to refer to all of the headquarters buildings. The Acute Neurosis Treatment Facility, the former CSRC, and the Song of Nephilim were a part of its facilities. Top secret research, including that on the original Zohar and the vessels of Anima, were con was conducted in an underground experimental facility. During the Milchian conflict, the tower was invaded by the Federation URTV Special Forces. However, the Song of Nephilim was allowed to launch, escaping the planet with a one third with one third of the organization's staff. The tower is also the place where Yoki Mizrahi fell to his death. Afterwards, Labyrinthos was set to be taken over by the Federation military, but they were unable to stop the space-time anomaly that Joachim had set off. Most of the tower's research material, including the original Zohar, was sealed off along with Milsha. Rumor has it that a Salvatore unit in command of the URTVs took some research material from Milsha just before it was sealed off. However, the confusion caused by the space-time anomaly and the Gnosis phenomenon has left us with no accurate records, so it is unknown whether there is any truth to this rumor. Now we do have Rennes le Chateau. Now I looked up Rennes, it's a real city in France. I thought it was, but I don't know anything important about it. I was thinking that it might be something to do with Joan of Arc, but I'm not seeing too much to that. You know, when they said she and saint, that was the first thing that came to my head. All right, let's see if they have anything to say about it. A piece of land thought to be a chunk of lost Jerusalem. Its origin is unknown. It is floating freely in space. The Ormus treat it as a sacred place, claiming that the saint sleeps there. What the saint is exactly is unknown. Like I said, my first thought was, was Joan of Arc, but there's not much to that. Not much to that. All right. Lost Jerusalem. Earth. Mother planet of the human race. So I can stop pretending like I'm guessing. It's totally Earth, but I think you were well aware of that for some time now. As a result of the space-time anomaly touched off as after the Zohar went out of control several thousand years ago, currently not even its existence can be confirmed. The goal of Ormus is to return to Lost Jerusalem. They are attempting to affect its resurrection through the Zohar. And that is it for locations. On to weapons. We got a few more of these. We got a few more of these. Attract inhibitor, the Zohar emulators cre created by Professor Yoki Mizrahi, have many varied functions that utilize the extensive energies of the Zohar. As with the original Zohar, however, it has been confirmed that a space-time anomaly appears when they go out of control. The attract inhibitor prevents this loss of control and inhibits the activity of the Zohar emulators. In biochemistry, an inhibitor is a substance that blocks enzymatic functions. An inhibitor kind of stops, kind of a chemical reaction type thing. That's what they're going for. Amplifier. A device used to amplify the Hilbert effect generated by the anti-gnosis scanning realians known as 100 series observational units. The radius of maximum coverage is about 100 kilometers. And it just occurred to me that might be why they're named that way, but I don't think so. All Federation military warships built after TC-4766 have them installed as part of their standard equipment. However, since the weight of the device runs anywhere from 10 to several hundred tons, only large vessels are able to have them on board. But you said all of them. Cosmos is an exception, however. Even without the use of an amplifier, she can cause Gnosis within several hundred astronomical units to take physical form. Cosmos is just that good. All right, now we have the MWS. Short for Multiple Weapon System. A multifunctional portable weapon system designed and built by jun Xion's junior colleague, Miyuki. Various types of weapons, such as anti-gnosis beam launchers, knuckles, taser rods, and more, are contained within. Very, very strange how they're all done that. It's a Swiss Army knife of weapons. It also has a built-in shield that utilizes spa spatial space, wow, spatial phase shifting and thus provides a high level of defensive capability in addition to its offensive capability. It also has a built-in provisional logical drive to cancel its own weight and increase the impact of its attack. With de this design, even weak-ass female users can easily use the weapon. So that's how she's able to do it. It's got a logical drive that cancels gravity somehow. 
Revised MWS. This is the revised model of the multifunctional portable weapon system designed and built by Miyuki. She took the original MWS, which Shion was using, and further customized it. Its defensive capabilities have been especially enhanced. The output of its phase space shield is triple that of the previous model. Instead of the bulky design of the previous MWS, it has been redesigned to be smart, slim, and compact in order to fit Xi'an's style of martial arts combat. Next we have the vertical, no, t sorry, tactical, wow. I'm gonna keep going, but wow. Tactical Assault Ship Merkaba. Its length exceeds 100 kilometers and its destructive power could easily destroy an entire planet. Pearl Merkaba, the ship's prototype, was used by Yoki Mizrahi as the plant for Momo's creation. That's where we went. It didn't work out so well last time we were there. The Phase Transfer Cannon. A weapon that destroys everything in the vicinity by creating a phase transfer. It can potentially even destroy a star. Normally, the bulk of the cannon has been reduced to Planck scale. What? But by receiving a phase transfer system activation key from a PT cartridge, the bulk of the cannon can materialize into real space. What appears to be a handgun is actually part of the phase transfer cannon. Once the system has been activated, it serves as both a trigger and laser locking device. Because Cosmos fired the weapon while limiting the phase transfer mass, the spatial anomaly increased in size, causing the Song of Nephilim to appear. And we did that once and we need to have like 10 database entries about it. Anti-Udu Shift. Even amongst the URTVs created to counter Udu, Junior's anti-Udu waveforms are especially strong. Once Junior awakens as an anti-Udu entity, he transforms into what's known as Red Dragon Mode. This destructive impulse comes from Junior losing self-control out of sheer anger. Once he transforms into this mode, he cannot restrain his power. Junior fears this power as it could possibly destroy all that he holds dear. The details of the other URTV's anti-Udu shifts are still unrevealed. Ganon and Citrine have a power which is closely related to Red Dragon mode, but the facts behind the situation are unknown. And Citrine, she's suddenly becoming important, isn't she? Mobile Dyna Interface, an optional weapon designed to improve Cosmos's mobility. On the outside, it looks like a monobike, but it's actually a versatile mobile device capable of air and space flight, as well as transfer flight. It also doubles as a simple maintenance box and functions as a main processor and weapons module for the ES Dyna. PT Cartridge, a cartridge that acts as a key to activate a phase transfer cannon. A substance that activates the primary phase shift and releases the latent heat energy into a vacuum is normally used for the PT cartridge. Prodigium. This one I don't think we have seen before. Or at least we saw it in the cutscene. An enormous, m or sorry, not an enormous. It is enormous, but an enormous mobile battleship more than 8,000 meters in length. That would be eight kilometers. The flagship of the Inquisitor fleet. The road, the word prodigium means miracle. Is that it? No, we still have logical drive. A logical drive is a new type of spaceship propulsion that replaces the traditional system of reactionary propulsion by reconfiguring the spatial phase around the direction of travel. It takes substantial energy to operate, but since the device itself is relatively easy to miniaturize, the system is used by manned units equipped with transfer type generators, such as eggs. Honestly, I, I don't know what that means to be. I just, ooh, that went right over my head. Logical Drive Pod, the name of an expansion drive used mainly by small mobile weapons without independent flight capability or by small spaceships to perform a gate jump. There is no uniform standard. Instead, there are various types suited for different uses and situations, such as the one used by the ES Asher during the Milshin Descent Operation and the ES Dynas Flight Unit. And that is it for weapons. On to organizations. Got a few here. Special Technology Advancement. Vector's Special Technology Advancement Division, managed in partnership with the government, it researched the structure of a space-wide network and developed the foundations of the UMN. After handing over UMN administration and management to the Federation government, it was supposedly eliminated with UMN support delegated to other departments. 
But what department? However, during the Gnosis terrorism, there was evidence that someone acting in the name of the department had carried out administration in S Division, where Grimoire was hiding, and deliberately intervened to help Grimoire. Actually, someone is even now administrating parts of S Division and act with the tacit approval of Vector's top officials. Ziggurat Industries, the people that made Ziggy. A company that developed its business by specializing in the fields of cybernetics and biotechnology. Its leading products were the cyborgs, known as the Ziggurat series. However, with a dwindling pool of cyborg body donors, the abolishment of the life recycling law, and the replacement of lost tissue in accident victims and other critical patients being taken over by procedures incorporating Realian technology formerly covered by cyborg surgery, the, the, the company decided to eliminate its cybernetic section. Ziggy is the final version cyborg in the Ziggurat series. He is the last Ziggurat. Currently, it has started work in the field of nanotechnology, with a special commitment to nanomaterials research. It has made major contributions to science and healthcare, including the refinement of highly conductive, durable materials and the development of medicines that suppress the prolifer proliferation of dangerous viruses. Next, we have the Executive Committee, the inner core and highest decision-making body of the Federation Central Government, which is in turn formed of representatives from hundreds of thousands of autonomous states. Decision making is handled by an executive committee assembly of 24 senior representatives. Its current director is Dmitry Yuryev. Wilhelm, CEO of Vector Industries, once served as executive committee director. Even now, he continues to have a large influence on the assembly, as you might expect. Wilhelm is everywhere. Tactical Sim Lab, a department within Vector. Its role is to conduct tactical level operational tests and assessment examinations on the arms and weaponry that have been developed. Its official title is the Vector Tactical Simulations Laboratory. Its mission is not only to test, but depending on the situation, also to conduct research and development into new technology. Within Vector, it is classified as a regular development section. And we have Hyams, a gigantic conglomerate that stands shoulder to shoulder with Vector. Originally a corporate entity affiliated with the immigrant fleet, it changed its name to Hyams Heavy Industries after being admitted to the Federation. Its representative is Heinlein, a man with a seat as an Ormus Cardinal. Next we have the Federation fleet. The fleet of the Galaxy Federation military. Established to maintain peace and stability across all space. It destroys enemies destroys enemy fleets by deploying multiple squadrons and spec ops ships around a central flagship. These destroyer fleets, grouped together with, with convoys built to escort groups of ships, supply fleets that handle procurement and other vessels, are termed the Federation Fleet. Many of the ships that make up the fleet were built by Vector and Hyams. Apparently they were working together, or they had different contracts for the government. Once divided into naval and space fleets, these were integrated together as the Federation Space Force, even though the naval and space fleets are now under the command of the Federation Space Force. They both still retain their own manners and customs. Once again, Navy? There's still a Navy when we're doing interstellar work like this? I guess. It just sounds a little weird to me. Federation Parliament, an assembly where representatives from each autonomous state gathered to establish governmental, planetary, and other policies. Its central assembly hall is located on the capital planet, 5th Jerusalem. There is also a space built within the UMN that is modeled after the central hall and linked with the real-life assembly. Therefore, only a very few representatives visit the parliament on 5th Jerusalem. Most representatives participate through the UMN. Different assemblies are open de depending on the issues to be discussed. The assembly on how to deal with Milsha was the same as the normal Federation Parliament, with all autonomous state representatives in assembly. 
There are also special assemblies hastily summoned during emergencies and administrative auditing assemblies that have the role of secretly investigating Galaxy Federation internal affairs and preventing corruption. In addition, there is the Executive Committee Assembly, which decides important matters of Federation law, very similar to the United Nations. And then the Executive Committee would, would probably be the Security Council. And then finally, we have unknown things. We have a few unknown things, including the name that I see down there. But we have ESs to talk about. First, we have the Issachar, Pelligree's unit. She does have an ES. It was primarily built for multiple si simultaneous multi-directional ether attacks, making it one of the most air combat capable Ormus units. The ether connection base can also be operated as a flexible shield. It is equipped with a spear for close range defense. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We still have quite a few more to go. And by quite a few, I mean four. Four more to discover. Next, we have the Simeon. This was Albedo's unit equipped with a long tail stabilizer, which functions as a logical drive. Its forte is high mobility combat. Its ability to deal with any battle situation, short or long range, makes it an almighty unit. It was indeed. Next we have the Dan, Voyager's unit. Equipped with a giant transformable shield, its defensive capabilities, when coupled with Voyager's spatial distortion abilities, are immense. When, it, when in its cruising configuration with the shield folded, its mobility rivals that of the Simeon. Next we have Reuben. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. I do know that there's still the Judah, right? But I can't think of any other names. Oh, and Benjamin. There's two. I got two. That's what I'm going to get out of this, probably. Jin's unit is the Reuben. Customized for Jin's use, specially made for close range combat, it is equipped with two real swords. Its design emphasizes higher dimensional battle mobility. As a result, its armor is light and it has no shield equipment. However, this is covered by Jin's unique battle style, which combines offense and defense using his swords. While it holds none of the heavy weaponry seen on other ES craft, the Reuben can unleash a special attack, a technique by Jin that launches a shockwave from his swords that serves as an effective move against faraway enemies. Finally, we have the Levi, Margulis's unit. It was designed to be a versatile unit capable of waging battle at both short and long ranges, but all long range weaponry was removed at Margulis's request. Instead, it was equipped with a long sword. It has also been equipped with two intimidation weapons, a throwing weapon similar to a kunai and a small throwable high explosive. Finally, we have a uh, Yeshua, the term Wilhelm used to refer to chaos, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Udu Simulator, a system built by the Yuriev Institute, mainly used for URTV link experiments that creates artificial Udu waves within the Encephalon. The simulator was also used to conduct adjustment of the URTV's anti-waveforms. Although the Udu waves this system produces are purely artificial, there have been se several accidents during Encephalon drills that have been caused, or that have caused standard URTVs to become infected. The Udu waveform sample on which this system was based was provided by Dmitry Yuryev, the person in charge of the facility. It has not been revealed when he procured this sample. And how did you get that sample? Next we have the Executioner, I'm referring to Grado. The Grado is called this by Albedo, since he is imbued with the ability to obliterate Rubido, also known as the Red Dragon. Zohar Emulator. An emulator is something that simulates the operations of one computer system on a different set of hardware and software. I know nothing about that. In this story, it refers to the original Zohar emulators created by the late Yoki Mizrahi. They were used by the UTIC organization as auxiliary originals for the link experiment on planet Ariadne and elsewhere. However, their original role was to act as an ignition key to operate the original. A total of 12 were created by Joachim, each one inscribed with the name of one of the 12 apostles. They went missing after the Milchian conflict, but all 12 were recovered by the Kukai Foundation, which currently manages them. They've got them all. Proto Merkaba. 
a giant research plant created by Yoki Mizrahi, where research was conducted on 100 series observational unit prototypes and the Hilbert effect, as well as on specialized types of realians. Originally, it was planned to serve as the mothership of Proto Omega, alongside the Song of Nephilim. After losing Sakura, however, Joachim used it as a plant to create Momo. After the Milchen conflict, it was taken over by the Federation government and was sealed inside the Abyss, from which it was resurrected by Albedo Piazzola. It can take in Gnosis, convert them to energy, and use that energy as a weapon. If it were ever actually used, it has enough power to wipe out a combined fleet instantly. Wasn't it used by Albedo? Like, didn't he do that? Whitening. In most cases, people who come into contact with the Gnosis experience a phenomenon where the body turns white and shatters into pieces. Cases of people mutating into Gnosis after whitening, while rare, have been confirmed. We saw that with Cherenkov. During the Gnosis attack on the Wuglinde, Shiana and Cherenkov, Andrew, were attacked by a Gnosis and subjected to this whitening phenomenon for a short period of time. Both escaped with their lives, but Andrew would later mutate into a Gnosis. Despite the fact that everyone who has whitened will eventually Gnosify, Xi'an has continued to avoid this disaster even to this day. Whether or not there is a reason for this is unclear. There's gotta be a reason, right? There's gotta be a reason. Anti-Udu Waveforms. The ability to generate waves opposite to the waves generated by Udu. These waves could be described as canceling waves. URTVs are equipped with this ability. Proto Omega, one of the relics of God, constructed and operated by the UTIC organization during the Milchen conflict. Afterwards, it was subjected to repeated linkage operational tests with the original Zohar, then deployed to intercept Federation forces during the first and second Milchen descent operations. It was set to be deployed in the third descent operation as well, but once the Gnosis appeared, it was left at the hangar in the confusion. After the Milchen conflict, it was once again operated by Sergius XVII upon his landing on Milsha. Link Master URTVs deploy a mental link in order to emit the waves that destroy Udu. The Link Master is the person who directs this deployment. This role was held by Rubido, who possesses strong anti-Udu waveforms. URTVs have been conditioned to be able to form a consciousness wave that acts against Udu. The Link Master sit, sets this wave, and the U other URTVs adjust their own waves to match. Red Dragon, a term referring to the generation, the generation mode for the final Udu waveform booster. Junior's assigned, assigned role was to use this ability to amplify waves sent by the other URTV units and have them converge to annihilate Udu's waves. Junior can also emit this wave himself, although its power is limited. Lumageton. A Zohar control program that can create certain specified wavelengths constructed by vector programming, vector programmer Grimar Verum during the Lost Jerusalem era. Apparently, these wavelengths affect not only the operation of the Zohar, but the appearance of Gnosis as well. Grimoire used the wavelengths to control the Gnosis and set off the Gnosis terrorism incidents. The Megaton was fragmented into pieces during the Milchen conflict and was later scattered across the UMN. Half a year ago, Grimoire collected all of the fragments and reassembled them. Upon his death after the Gnosis terrorism, however, the Megaton was lost once more. Sounds like we should try to get that kind of back together. But with that done, we are done with over half of the database. And that is definitely going to do it for these parts of Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 3. I've been Baller Scoob. I've been joined, as always, by the Put Me In Coach team of Xion. Hope you guys have enjoyed these parts. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.